My birth mother abandoned me in a motel room when I was three years old. One of the earliest indicators that something wasn't right was as soon as I was adopted, one of the first things that I did was threaten my sisters with a blunt pocket knife. I graduated from high school and joined the Army. In terms of my life as a soldier, things were going well, but my heart wasn't changed. I was involved in drug use and began to sell drugs and eventually was charged by the military, 16 felony counts. And so I went AWOL and uh, purchased a plane ticket to Los Angeles, California. Met some men there who were doing robberies. We began to, to rob places from Los Angeles, California, state by state, all the way to, to Texas, where I was arrested and I was sentenced to 17 years in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. The first weekend that I was in prison, there was a riot. I'm looking and seeing that guys are getting stabbed. I found myself living in a world in which you have to take sides. I didn't have the hope of the gospel. And so I was beginning to become more and more self-consciously racist. I saw no other option available to me and that was eventually what led me into a white supremacist prison gang. Every tattoo that I have, it has some sort of connection to the gang. This is actually a swastika made out of sickles. This is what remains of a Ku Klux Klansman and a burning cross. Uh, I've been having these removed, but uh, that's what remains of them at this point. So I was transferred then to a maximum security prison. It was what was called a gladiator farm. When I arrived on that unit, there was already a war going on between blacks and whites. My next door neighbor yelled at me, I know you have a shank. I didn't have a shank. I didn't have anything at that point, but I thought I better get one. And so I did. There came a point when the door to my cell and his cell were opened at the same time. It wasn't supposed to happen, but it did. I came at him with a shank, and thankfully, a guard was able to step in between us just in time. But I was put in solitary confinement as a result of that. I was confirmed as a gang member. What, what that means is they, they have the evidence of my tattoos, for one thing. They have the evidence of, of what I've done, and so they're able then to confine me essentially indefinitely. One night I was scanning the radio dial and the Lord used uh, a radio program called Here Comes the Light to shine the light of the gospel into my heart. And the thing that he dealt with in my heart first and foremost was the issue of racism. And there was a moment of total despair when I said, I can't do this. And in that moment of despair, I realized I'm going to hell. And suddenly something changed within me. The Lord did it. And I simply fell on my knees before him. And I said, Lord, change my heart. Take this away and help me to follow you. What I'd later find out, of course, was that the, the only group in prison that doesn't segregate according to race were the Christians. I was still in solitary confinement which is where I needed to be. The Lord used it to mature me and grow me so that when I did get out of solitary confinement and go back to general population, I was prepared for the hardships that would come. I spent 10 years in solitary confinement, but I used the time to read, to study. The Lord was growing me in my fellowship with Him. It wasn't wasted time. I simply began to read the Bible for myself. And I started listening to the radio, so I listened to Christian programs on the radio, and I wanted to understand the Bible better. And that's, of course, where I came across a program called Renewing Your Mind. Though I was in that cell, the Lord was there with me. Despite all the wickedness of my heart and all the evil things that I had done, all the people that I had hurt, especially my own family, He set me free. My name is Lowell Ivey, and I was set free in prison by God's grace.